Okay, so welcome back. We're looking at this spindle issue we've got on the VF3. So skip a little bit of the boring stuff. We took the covers off and we've removed the tool release piston. They're straightforward. Um, so if anyone's doing this sort of thing, you're gonna know how to do that. Now I've just jogged the spindle head down there. Because the tool release piston's removed, the air has to be turned off. I've turned off setting seven. And in parameters, parameter 76, the low air delay, I've just put all nines. So you can jog the machine around, you can do everything you want, and the low air alarm is not gonna come on for a hell of a long time. So first port of core, I just wanted to take this off and see. Obviously, we've got our belts there. Using a bit of wood to prop it up, I just wanted to see where we're moving. So if I rest the camera on there, you can see the whole lot moving up and down, which obviously it shouldn't do. Now, it's not the pulley loose, because that's connected to the actual shaft. So it's nothing to do with that. Now, if you look a bit further down here, you've got the main body. Then I assume below the two belts there, I'm trying to get down, so you've got belt, belt, and then below this one, the bottom belt, I think that's like a the collar which the oil mist line goes on. So if I just hold that there, so you'll see that staying still, that collar, and we're still moving just the spindle assembly that's inside. So, it's nothing to do with that collar setup. So there's nothing obvious gonna happen there. So the only thing I can do next to have a proper look, lower this down onto a block, uh, put the vice underneath, lower it down onto a block, undo that and let the spindle come out and we'll have a look what's inside. So I'll get that lowered down, get the bolts undone and then I'll show you it being taken out. Okay, so I've lowered it down onto these blocks here, I'm just above the blocks. I've took the bolts out, six socket, socket cappets um, that go underneath and around there. Now, <coughs> what I haven't done, because I'll be honest with you, I forgot, I haven't loosened the transmission housing to loosen the belts. So I'm actually lifting the belts up with my fingernails as I tap the spindle down. So I'm just using the rawhide side of the copper mallet and the spindle, it is coming out. Oh, you can see there, it's starting to go. I can actually push that now. And now I'm gonna slide the belts up if I can. Now what I'm gonna do is raise the head. So I've got it jogging in the Z and I'm just pushing that down as we go. And I need to loosen up the belts. And again, so one belt is completely off now and two belts are completely off. And you can see the spindle is out the front there. Now what I want to do, before I forget, and it's easy to forget, I want to mark the front. And I also want to quickly grab my torch to just see if there's any shims on there. And it doesn't look like there is. So I'm now going to jog this up.
and belts out the way. And then I need to is just get a couple of pry bars and just gently try and pry away to see if that will come down. that back in because what I forgot was the air fitting in the side in the side of the spindle so I'm going to remove that that was only finger tight I need to get a small spanner on there to undo that. Not sure what size this is, but we're going to try a half inch or two big. Seven sixteenths, and that fits perfect. So seven sixteenths fitting on the collar of the spindle there. Still a little bit too tight to do by hand. There you go, there's the small fitting. That was in the side of the spindle there. So make sure you don't lose that. Now I should be able to jog all the way up and that should come out. Nice and easy. go there we have one spindle take you out of there one spindle removed from the machine so removing that is really straightforward obviously you've got your six main bolts that hold the spindle in don't forget your fitting on the side like I did luckily enough it dropped on its own and as I went to lever it I remembered um, that the fitting's going to stop it so that will stop it coming out do not forget and obviously your tool release piston has to come out of the way. So that is the spindle out of the machine. I'll be able to carry it from here onto the bench. And then not tomorrow, but the next day, we've got the VF0E spares machine that I'm ripping apart and scrapping the casting and everything from. So I don't need this machine for a second. So now this is out. Before I pull this apart or do anything, I'll leave this to one side now until the VF0E arrives. I'll get the spindle out of that one using the same procedure, except the machine won't power up, so I'll probably have to um, hand jack the head up and we'll strap it and we'll do something to make sure it sort of stays in place. And we'll get the spindle out and we'll put them side by side and do a comparison. So there's just a quick video now of how to remove the spindle on the VF3. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the content and we'll see you again soon.